Networking no knows. Ray Stonehouse. Thank you, Christine. What a great introduction. I couldn't have written that better myself. <laughs> That's another story. Right, great, great, great introductions. By a show of hands, how many people network for their business? Business network. A couple of people. How many people network for personal reasons? There's still, a few, <laughs> there's still a few hands that aren't going up there. Everybody should be networking for personal business, for personal pleasure, because there's advantage to building your network. What I'm going to be taking a look at over our short time together is some of the research that I had done when I wrote the book Power Networking for Shy People. I found that I could probably talk to you several hours on what you should be doing. What I want to do in this short time together is take a look at some things that you shouldn't be doing it's a little bit of a lighthearted approach to networking because if you look at what you shouldn't be doing, then you've got a better idea of what you could be doing. And the shouldn't be doing is probably a lot quicker than what you should be doing. Clear? Clear as mud. We have a PowerPoint to go through, and I'm just going to make a pass out a handout for everyone so you can follow along. You can jot down some not some not some notes if you would like. Take a copy and pass it along, please. Now there's 15 different points here. They're not in any priority. One is not more important than the other. It's probably just the way they hit my mind and the way that I recorded them. So if you want to be a good networker, these are things that you should keep in mind. The first one is being, you don't want to be a no-show. And it says not showing up for an appointment is what that means. I think every one of us knows somebody in our life that well, I'll meet you Tuesday. We'll get together. We'll get together at a certain time. And you know that they're never going to be there because that's what their history is. That's what their background is. They never show up. That's their reputation. You know that. But do you want to be that type of person? Do you want to be remembered as no-show Joe? When you're out networking, people are remembering you. You have your reputation. You're developing something. You're meeting people. You're developing your reputation. So something to think about is if you set up an appointment, you either show up for your appointment, and let's face it, reality is that we are not going to be able to keep all the commitments that we make. But as being a professional, what you have to do is you have to take the actions. If you're unable to attend a meeting, could be notifying the person, could be by email, could be leaving a voicemail, could be leaving an email and a voicemail and talking to the person doing everything that you can so that person is not sitting in a coffee shop or a restaurant they've already ordered they're waiting for you so don't be a no-show Joe that seems like an easy one at the end of this I'm going to open it up for some questions and answers so if you have a, a question as we work through these 15 just keep them in mind and we'll just re refocus at the, at the conclusion of this presentation the second one is not following up with something that you are saying you're going to do. Now, just expand upon that a little bit. Is anybody familiar with BNI, Business Networking International? You ever heard of it? What it is, it's a they're breakfast networking groups, and they're referral marketing. So you have one person from each profession that gets together. It's over a breakfast, and they help refer each other. They help build each other's business. Kelowna's got quite a few, three or four BNIs, and there, there are other groups, the Okanagan Business Referral Groups and Okanagan Business Professional Network. So there's several, several groups. But Dr. Ivan Meisner was the founder of the BNI. So that was sort of the, the first one. They're the one that started things off. And he has something called giver's gain. This is a basic concept that he has. Now the concept behind giver's gain is that if you give something to somebody freely, they will feel the need to repay you in some way. It's called the law of reciprocity. If you are a believer in the law of attraction, which I happen to be, if you give something to somebody, somewhere along the line, the universe will give you something in return. But what happens is, when you give something to somebody, it creates a certain tension. 
when they are they feel obligated to give you something in return. Well, the, opposite, the, the idea here is the giver's gain. You gain by giving something. Now, as I said in the Law of Attraction, if I give something to somebody, it may not be that individual that returns it to me. I could get it from somewhere else. If you are a believer in uh, systems thinking, back about two decades ago, in the 1980s, I guess it would be, Peter Senge wrote a book called The Fifth Discipline. It's a book that every adult should read, especially if you're in business. The fifth discipline talks about systems thinking. One of the aspects of systems thinking, tying into the law of reciprocity and giver's gain, is called creative tension. The idea is, if there's any smokers or any drug addicts in the room, <laughs> nobody's going nobody's to respond to that one. But one of the behavior modification techniques they use, they put an elastic on your hand. And they pull that elastic out. So if you get a craving for a smoke, you pull the elastic out, Zap, you get a snap. Well, that you can't keep that elastic out forever. That's what that creative tension is. The idea is that if you do a favor for somebody, they're going to return it. The whole giver's gain. So there's advantage to doing that. However, if you say that you are going to do somebody, well, I'll send you a, I'll send you a, a file on that. I'll send you an article on this. I'll send you this. And you don't do it, it works against you. Well, in the first one, you're a no-show Joe. This one is you're not following up with people. And they'll get, you'll get that reputation of not following up. So you want, don't want to do that. If you promise to do something, do everything that's in your, in your means to be able to do so. If you can't do it, let the individual know that you're not able to do it. And you follow up with them later on. And you'll still win because they'll feel grateful that you did that. Now, this one's a little bit different. Same terms, not following up. But in this case, many people go to networking events and they meet people, pass out their business card and they, well, we'll get together. I'll give you a call next week. I have a colleague here in Kelowna. He was a, he is a financial planner. And he's told me that he almost 100% of the time follows up with the people that he meets at a business networking session, which is great. He's got, you know, got more, more courage, I guess, than I do, but he follows up with it. But inevitably, he says that people say to him, you know, very few people actually follow up. So people say they're going to follow up, but they don't follow up. So when he follows up, he puts himself to the top of the pile and people recognize him for that and they're more likely to want to do business with him because he followed up. So the secret is if you say you're going to follow up with somebody, do follow up with them. This one, I think most of us have experienced this. Just let me walk you through the scenario. You're in a networking session, there's people all around. It could be a cocktail party, it could be personal. You're talking with somebody, you're having a, a great conversation with them. But while you're doing that, you're, you're looking them in the eye. But they're like this. They're looking all over the place. It's as though they're looking for a better opportunity. They're looking for somebody better to speak to than you. You ever, you ever experienced that before? You feel that they're not really giving you your con their concentration? You ever experienced that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Work with me, audience. <laughs> Say yeah. So don't don't do that yourself. If you are talking with somebody, give them your full undivided attention. But that doesn't mean you stare them in the eyes. You can still glance around to see what it is, but not be looking for a better opportunity. Because people will keep that in mind. They won't want to talk to you. And they'll remember that. As far as I'm concerned, there's no room for sexist or racist language, anywhere really, I don't think there is, certainly not nowadays. For me, the alarm is, it's, it's usually, I call it a, an old crusty fellow, old meaning he's probably about two or three years older than me, <laughs> I'm not sure how that happened, but, and they come up to, can you take a dirty joke? Well, no, I don't want to hear a dirty joke because it's, they're usually not just dirty joke, they're, they're, they're sexist, they're, and you, once you get that, can you take a dirty joke, it's like, it's like quicksand. Once you say yes, you're trapped by that. I don't want to hear a dirty joke. 
I haven't told a joke that I can recall in a good 15 years or so. I used to tell jokes. I used to collect jokes. I used to love jokes. But I told a couple jokes that happened to be at a Toastmasters meeting, and I was called upon it, uh, called on it uh, from my fellow members that the jokes were inappropriate. So I stopped using them. No, I try to fit humor, I try to fit entertainment into every presentation that I do. I just don't stand up and do jokes. So I don't believe that there's any room in a business networking session, you're mingling with somebody, to fit in sexist or racist language. And yet I'm sure there are people out there that when you talk to them, you'll recognize it when you hear it. You'll just have a feeling that something's not right here. I don't want to talk to this person. Now this one's for the gents. If you go to the gents and you come out, check to make sure your fly is done up. We don't want to have a wardrobe malfunction. It was a Janet Jackson. It was in the Academy. What was it? not the Academy Awards, but uh, what was it? She was the entertainment. She had a she had a wardrobe mal malfunction. Anybody remember that? Hit the news. It was all across everything. I know this one from personal experience. I was chairing a meeting, some two-hour meeting on stage, tuxedo, black tuxedo, 300 people in the audience. At the two-hour mark, I sat down, happened to notice that my fly was undone the entire time on stage. So the secret is, gents, if you've got a black tuxedo, wear black underwear. That's all you got to do. Just make sure the fly is undone. While it may be a great conversation starter in other places, you know, the bull is ready to leave the pen is not what you want to talk about when you are at a networking session. So gents, double check. I learned this one in Kelowna. I probably knew about it. I had it at a networking session. I joined a discussion with several people. I was a realtor telling everybody how wonderful life was, how wonderful his life was, how wonderful he was. And he dominated the conversation. And after about 15 minutes trying to extricate myself from it, I finally did. And I, I wrote, actually went back and wrote an article on it because it had such a profound effect on me. If you're out there networking, you know, the expression is you've been given two ears and one mouth for a reason. So you can listen to twice as long as you do, as you would be talking. This gentleman did not understand that. He was the center of the audience. Don't waste your time on people like that. Move on. On the other side of it, don't be that way yourself. Even if you are wonderful, there's ways to fit things in. You can fit it in conversation, but it doesn't always have to be about you. You can share the conversation. This one, I think everybody can relate to this one is talking about somebody else who's not there. We call it gossip. It's malicious. And there are, I think we all know somebody that it is like this. There was an old joke. Well, I guess I do tell a joke. Here's a joke. <laughs> we we'll let that out of the tape there. A fellow passes away and he goes to, to heaven. He's at the gates. And St. Peter tells him, I'll go on for a while, come back, and we'll have a chat a little later on. So he goes into heaven and he's walking around and he can't help but notice that in every second or third tree there's a suggestion box. He thought, well, that's weird. You know, this is heaven. Everything's, everything's supposed to be perfect. It's, you know, it's the afterlife. It's, it's wonderful. So he finally met up with, for coffee. They were networking, met, met St. Peter. And he said to that, he mentioned it to him, you know, this is supposed to be so perfect here. What's going on? And St. Peter told him, he says that there are some people in this world that are only happy when they're complaining. And I think that's an important thing, that there are people that we know in our lives, the people that we meet in our business connections, that are only happy when they're complaining or when they're putting somebody else down. When it gets caustic, when they're talking very negative about somebody else, you have to think, if this person is talking to me about somebody that I don't even know, and they're putting them down, what are they saying about me when I'm not there? So get toxic people away from you, don't engage in their conversation, and don't be one yourself. Dump job. These aren't official ones, these are ones that I made up on my own. A dump job. A dump job is where 
you use the person you're networking with as a sounding board without asking their permission to do so. Well, there's some, well, in the last example, I mentioned people that are only happy when they're complaining. There are people that are not happy at all, but complain all the time. Their life is miserable. They want to bring other people down to their level. So they're miserable. They're at a networking session when you think you'd be trying to set up network connections and look for business opportunities, look for similarities or commonalities. What they're doing is they're, they use an unwilling partner or victim to tell their whole life story. Story, But you've heard the expression, ain't it awful? Ain't it awful to such and such? Ain't it, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a horrible week. My wife ran off with the milkman. Yeah, it's, the kids like the milkman better than me. But, and now I don't have any milk in the house. But it just keeps going on and on. That, that's a dump job. While there is room for sharing with people that, you know, things aren't going so well, the other person should be a willing partner. They should be able, knowing that they're participating in it. And it's not a one-way conversation where you were dumping on them. This one's similar to number 10 here, monopolizing other people's time. Similar to the point that was talking about, I'm so wonderful. This one is where somebody would come up to a person at a networking session and start talking with them, and they're somewhat comfortable, and they stay with them for almost ever. Now, the research that I did in writing the book that I was mentioned in the, my introduction, what I found was that the research, whoever wrote the article that I read, said that when you go to a networking session, and there's people there, I'll, I'll quiz you on this one. If you see somebody at a networking session, do you think you should spend time with them, talk to them, or not? Any thoughts? That depends. Well, should you spend time with them or not? It's a simple question. Doesn't? Yes. Yes? Any no's? Okay, why, okay, why would you say yes? You're at a networking session. Okay. Would anybody say no? Would anybody take the opposing side, even for argumentative sake? Well, you'd say no because you're networking to meet new people rather than to reacquaint yourself with people you already know. Exactly. And that's what the research, the book, the articles I read said, that you are there at a networking session to meet people. You are there to get new opportunities. You already know these people. They're not going to give you anything. Now, I would say what, what uh, Teresa had said is being the opposite. I take that approach is that while you're looking for opportunities, it's good to touch base with people that you already know because they are part of your existing network, like watering plants or fertilizing them. You want to nurture those connections. You want to share with those people. You want to be able to let them know what's new in your life and, and, and your adventures whether it be personal or business. You want to know what's in theirs, what's happening with their family, so you have, you're developing a relationship at a deeper level than just strictly a business level. But even probably more important than that is that they are a, an effective tool for you for getting out there and meeting other people by saying to them, okay, who do you know in this room that you've seen that I probably don't know that you can introduce me to? Who could help me with what I'm working on right now? So people that you know are an effective tool. But this point here focuses on monopolizing other people's time. This whole workshop or seminar was originally developed for shy networkers. What often happens, and you can pick out the shy networkers in a the room, they tend to be on the side, they're not engaging with people, may not be making eye contact, or when they do latch onto somebody, they're into their comfort zone, and they may not want to let go. So if you're a shy networker, you need to, to let go of other people, not monopolize people's time. And if you're in the receiving end of it, and people are monopolizing your time, it might be a great time to say, oh, there's somebody that I need to, to talk to over there. OK. 
Can Canadians and North Americans, for the most part, we respect business cards. We're not in the same class as you would see with perhaps the Japanese business people. They take their business cards much serious, seriouser than what we do. So if somebody pre presents you with a business card, you take a look at that business card, you hold it with two hands, you read it, you flip it over to see if there's anything on the back, and you respect it, what you do at that point. You may want to hold on to it while you're talking to the person. You may use this as a source of questions for the person, but you respect it. Under no circumstances do you do you know, something like that, like picking your teeth, or just what I've seen people do is write on the back of it. Well, they might be okay writing in the back of it when the people are out of the way. I wouldn't do it in front of them because this is their card. This is them. So you want to be able to, to respect that card. And the same thing, you would hope that people would also respect your card. For those of us that have been to business networking sessions on a regular basis, does anybody know a shark? Would you be able to describe a shark if I asked you? Part of the session that you didn't didn't hear was was another session where we I had a, an interactive exercise where I had people act out a position of an egg uh, called the funky chicken and the eagle. Those are three different uh, categories that I see at a networking session. A shark is a person. They are there at that networking session. They are not there to get to know you. They are not to, there to learn more about you. They are there to make a sale. Quite often people will say these people fall into the categories of insurance salesperson or financial planners. They're there to, or network marketers for some of the network networking platforms. They're there to make the sale on the spot. They're not there to develop a, an ongoing relationship. So don't act like a shark. shark. That's the whole secret from here. The hit and run. If you've been hit by a shark, you'll know it because they're going to want your information, they're going to set something up, they want to almost know your bank stuff. Now, I can understand if you're just starting in business and you don't have your business cards ready, you're at a networking session, that happens. But if you've been in business for quite a while and you don't have business cards, people are going to start wondering. If you can't even do the basic steps of not having a business card, why would I want to do business with you? You haven't set yourself up as a professional. And I know a fellow that he was a, a furniture, well, he's an off, he's office furniture professional salesperson. Highly motivated, highly professional. Did not have business cards. He went to a speed networking event that I had, and his line was, how would you possibly forget a face like this? You, you, I don't need business cards. You're not going to forget me. And I thought, well, then, then and I asked people about that, and they, they had their own thoughts, but they thought it was really weird. Now I happen to notice that he, he works with the Dairy Queen now. Maybe he should have got himself a, a proper business card, because I guess people did forget him. So have your own business card. They have them on sale at Staples for 10 bucks every so often. How can you beat that for 500 cards? Eating food while conversing. You go to a downtown business association, you go to a chamber of commerce, you get a ticket, you get a couple free drink tickets, you get some food. They always have somebody that provides hors d'oeuvres to showcase the restaurant or the, the, catering, the catering establishment. Now think about this. You've got a plate in one hand. You've got your drink in the other hand. You come across somebody and you start to talk with them. So how, how do you shake your hand at this, shake their hand at this point? You've got to get your plate, put it on your glass, precariously balance it out while you shake your hand, their hand. And then while you're doing that, you also have to go to the next step of being able to balance it, reach in, pass your business card over to them, and somehow be able to take theirs while you're having your food. My suggestion is, if you're at a networking session, don't eat while you're networking. Go on up in the corner, all the shy people, go over in the side, have your meal and your beverage, and then go back out to the networking session. And if they happen to have a spinach dip, Stay away from it. Have you ever seen somebody or talked to somebody that's got a big hunk of spinach in their front teeth? You cannot concentrate 
possibly on whatever they're saying because all you're doing is going, you know, spin it, spin it. You're, just, you're focusing in on that. So don't get yourself into that situation. Stay away from the spinach dip. Have your food from the side. Maybe having a drink later on because you still got one hand free. And that's a good segue to the last one is don't, well it, should say, it doesn't really say that, but it that looks like it tells you to, to network while you're inebriated. But the point is not to network while you're inebriated. You go to these events, they give you two free tickets. If you do it right, you can pick up tickets from the non-drinkers. So you can get pretty loaded at one of these events if you chose to. Challenge is you are there for a purpose. You are there networking, you're a business professional, you're networking, you're going there for opportunities. And what happens, as most of us know that, that do drink, the more you drink, the less inhibited you are, you become disinhibited, you are more likely to say something that you probably shouldn't to, shouldn't to a, a fellow professional, something that's going to be rememberable, not in the way that you want to be. You may see your picture on Facebook, you, which you were really don't want to see in certain circumstances. As a commercial used to go, I don't know if they ever had it out here, but you are your own liquor control board. I think that really comes to play when you are business networking. Now, I don't know if the women in the room can, can attest to this, but some of the guys might be able, and I might be stereotyping. You ever notice, gents, sometimes 10 beers not enough, but another night, one beer, you can't even, you would never even consider walking because you, you ever had that? Well, I stick her to her. Okay, 15 beer. How's that? <laughs> that's a year's worth for me. That's a year's worth for me. Because your metabolism is, metabolism is different. That's my presentation on the top 10 or top 15 networking no-nos. It's kind of a flip over of what you should be doing. I hope you take away something from that. That's my presentation. We'll open it up for question and answer now, if we can turn the camera on.